Friday afternoon, folks, live here again at the Think Tech Studios downtown Honolulu. Ted Ralston with our show, uh, Where the Drone Leads. We have an incredible cast on today. We've got uh, Dr. Peter Quigley. Peter, thanks Good for coming you. on board. First time around this, uh, on this show. First time. And that means you get to come back. That's, okay. uh, that's the rules. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and on the telephone from far, far away in Kailua, right over the Ko'olaus, we have Jim Christofuli of DBED. Hi, Jim. Uh Aloha. Oh, well, how about that? Okay, we got a tropical response out of Jim. That's good, Jim. Good seeing you there. <laughs> well, you, you, you wanted Italian or what? Italian would be fine, sure. Right. What's your name, though? Okay, so now we're all squared away. So we bring to the public on this show uh, topics of current and, and uh, topical interest on uh, UAS or drones, as they're sometimes called. And uh, this is an incredible week coming up because we do have the Aerospace Summit that DBED is putting on, Jim Christofuli is running it, along with uh, Jeff Wong down at uh, the, uh, Jeff Pang, sorry, down at uh, the Capitol. They'll right. be uh, running basically displays up starting on Saturday, running through the, the week, and then the heavy part is a Tuesday and then Wednesday when we have the various uh, panel discussions and, and, and outbreak sessions to develop a aerospace plan for Hawaii for the next five years. That's right. And Peter, you're running that. Uh, you're gonna be the MC anyway. Well, um, actually, I, I, do, uh, I do have the privilege to introduce the governor, and then I moderate the first panel, which is basically the overview of the, of the summit. And so we've got some heavy hitters uh, there in that first panel. Uh, Mike Bruno is the vice chancellor of research at UH Manoa. And of course, we have a lot of activity at Manoa around the Hawaii Space Flight Lab. He'll speak to that and give us a little bit of an overview of that. And Mike Jones is the senior advisor from PACOM, is going to be on my panel, Hank Rogers, of course, of, uh, of uh, Blue Planet fame and other uh, enterprises. He's also the chair of the Pisces Project, and he'll be there as well as Captain uh, Vance Johnson, who's commanding officer at uh, PMFR. So it's, uh, it's quite a lineup to start the venue. And again, it sort of is the umbrella conversation that then uh, you know, allows the other panels. Yours is coming up to two after that, topic two, uh, but uh, it's going to kind of so set the So your panel kind of set the stage for what people Correct. are thinking about, what the uh, various users have from a needs perspective that, that uh, Hawaii can help fulfill and that UH can fulfill, I presume. UH has uh, got to be a big part of this. Well, uh, certainly UH uh, would like to be uh, and has been um, with Luke Flynn's work at the Hawaii uh, uh, Space Flight Lab as well as the drone work that's been going on in the College of Engineering already with some of the research. Um, and of course, we have drone uh, drone activities at UH Hilo. We've got some uh, Arthur Cunningham is out there, and he's been running some programs and some non-credit training. And so uh, uh, there's been plenty going on at UH. But uh, the whole point to this, like so much in Hawaii, is making the connections across sectors and across agencies because nobody can do it alone. That's pretty cool. And Jim, uh, great credit to you for putting this on. Jim, tell us what your expectations are when when Thursday is over. <laughs> and, and, the, and the day has ended. Uh, what do you want to have as a take home, take away, and new information for people to have? Sure. Well, what we're looking at is trying to uh, depict what's the aerospace industry in Hawaii, why it is such a strategic growth sector for the state, and uh, basically identify some of the low hanging fruit for development moving forward, say, over the next five years. So we've identified a number of areas, including uh, commercial space launch developing of a UAS uh, test range system in Hawaii, uh, focusing on a whole new range of uh, tech, tech development capabilities under the rubric of planetary sustainability. How can we test, validate, and implement technologies in Hawaii that can improve the state of our, our planet? And those same technologies of renewable energy, broadband telecommunications, additive manufacturing, those all can be applied to help advance our reach through the solar system, explore, exploring the moon, trips to Mars and beyond in a very uh, exciting way. And Hawaii can play a big role here because of our moon Mars-like terrain, where you can test and validate these new technologies. And in fact, we're gonna be signing a new Space Act agreement with NASA uh, that will basically form an alliance between the agency and Hawaii. And in particular, NASA Ames Research Center in California and the Big Island because there are many of these high-tech firms that work in Silicon Valley and based at the NASA Research Park in Palo Alto that are very interested in developing new technologies for future robotic and human missions to space. And what better place to test them than in Hawaii on our moon Mars-like terrain, especially with our international connectivity, because our motto is really, or I say our approach, is to uh, focus on 
international collaboration, build public rather than compete, uh, collaborate with our various uh, uh, international partners so we can share uh, complementary resources to help uh, develop new cost-effective ways uh, to sustainably get beyond low Earth orbit, and then build public-private partnerships between Hawaii and uh, various uh, organizations around the United States and internationally that are interested in corporate development of space. So public partner, public private partnerships are a big part of this. And you mentioned a key word along your, your, your dialogue, and that was uh, uh, additive manufacturing. Hawaii yes. is not seen as a state where we manufacture a lot of things. We have the shipping issue, we have the recent natural resources issues, and we have the, the, the lack of a, sorry, what you might call a, an airplane assembly trained workforce here. And so, uh, or sp space uh, system uh, trained workforce. So, in terms of the Hawaii contribution to this, I can see the additive manufacturing concept is really interesting, Jim, because that doesn't require necessarily the large industrial footprint and base that we think of for airplane assembly and truck assembly. So, sub assemblies Absolutely. and miniaturized components could well be made here, as well as could be the engineering and the research and the testing that is going along the way to make those happen. So, Hawaii Absolutely. has an interesting, interesting. Uh, and, and kind of a non-traditional potential future here in the, in the entire world of the evolving aeronautics. Yeah, can Peter, I just you... uh, uh, support what uh, Jim was saying? He, he used a, a word that's key to my heart, and that's collaborate. He used it in the international framework. But if you look at the uh, folks that are coming to the summit, from industry, from academics, from, from the military, you know, this is one, once again, a great opportunity for Hawaii to pull its energies and its policies together around an economic area uh, that has great potential for the state. As you're pointing out, there's lots of abilities to go in engineering directions, advanced manufacturing directions. We've already shown in the, uh, in the flight program with Luke Flynn out of UH Manoa that we've connected all, almost all the campuses have been involved in that space launch effort that he's been involved in and, and launching a small satellite into space in partnership with, uh, with uh, PMFR. But uh, that collaborate issue is crucial because we're not going to get, we're not going to continue to get a lot of chances. I mean, I, I continue to think about that word with San Diego. They saw 30 years ago they had uh, tourism, real estate, and a naval base, and they knew they had to have more. And they got together intentionally and strategically and move from a $3 billion regional economy to a $178 billion regional economy in less than 30 years, but they did it intentionally. And so we can't, uh, one of the urgencies around this summit, we just had a, a statewide conference this morning at the Koalau Resort, educators, entrepreneurs, private sector folks, uh, government folks around just STEM in general. So this is one piece of that mm -hmm. STEM muscle that we've got to grow um, and tourism's great we can add to tourism we can add tech to tourism you know come and see the, you know be part of the anti-aging uh, you know research and recreational area come and be part of the science and technology uh, uh, advancements in hawaii with new energy and new agriculture um, but if we don't do that then 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 our you know economic future is um, you know is uh, is questionable. So this is crucial not only for the opportunity about aerospace and aviation, I include aviation in this frequently because it's also low-hanging fruit for us in a number of ways, but you're right to, to sort of put manufacturing in quotation marks because mm -hmm. we do the same thing with aviation in some other areas. We did it with drones when it first showed up. In 2010, FAA said, well, by 2020 there might be 15,000 drones. In 2016, <laughs> yeah, right. they modify that projection and say, oh, really, by 2020, there's going to be 5, 542,000 drones. And, of course, the economic impact changed from, you know, $1.9 billion of an economic impact nationwide to $10 billion. Of course, so we, we have to step up to some things that don't look quite... Uh, possible, you know, they look, well, we, we don't do that. We have to write them down first. If we don't have the vision and write them down and extrapolate our minds, we'll never get there. That's right. So this is a great opportunity to do that. And what goes through my mind, you know, I've been work working with Jim for a couple of months, putting ideas together to get to the point where we're going to have the conference next week or the summit. And uh, this, this gathering of people and the, the mental capital being spent putting it together and the, the discussions that will occur, that really becomes a body of, of well-informed knowledge that the legislator can, legislature can turn to, the business community can turn to, the venture capitalist people can turn to. If we could somehow keep that energy going and keep that group of people together in some virtual way, 
because people who write laws, people who make bills, people who generate in, uh, development plans and investment plans need that body of people to turn to. So I wonder, maybe we can turn to Jim. I guess that's a debed function. Jim, we'll throw it over the wall to you. How do we keep <laughs> that body of people together and keep their connectivity going and make them responsive to our legislature and to the business community? Well, the bottom line is the magic wand, but, but, but realistically, you know, if we can find a common denominator, what is going to be maximally beneficial to the greatest number of people? And I'll give you one example with aerospace. Um, our big economic drivers in this state are uh, the visitor industry and the military. Well, aerospace and the new opportunities that are being discussed here can certainly help expand and diversify our two big economic drivers. In the, in the visitor industry, we're looking at developing a commercial spaceport at Kona International uh, to bring, allow space planes to launch and land at this airport and so bring basically space tourism to Hawaii, which will, I, I like to say it adds the orthogonal dimension uh, to our visitor industry. And then in the military, we're working on developing a new test range for unmanned aerial systems. We're looking at possibilities for commercial launch into both polar and equatorial orbits, all from the Big Island. And this is another way to expand military operations, but again, collaborating, bringing the private sector, the public sector, the military, the university into partnerships so that there's a bottom line of benefits. Okay, and that, that partnership that we're speaking of, Peter mentioned collaboration, you mentioned the, the partnerships and such, getting it all together. That's what I see is a great value here. We're going to assemble once this grand bunch of people with a lot of information and visions, and they all, each one has their own networks that pull things together. And they're all more or less marching in the same direction. Somehow we have to create a Give them all a card. They, uh, they belong to a party now. What if that party? I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's the Aerospace Summit party. Let's talk about that, how we're going to go forward after we get back from our first break. Sure. Aloha, everyone. I'm Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on ThinTech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to talk about news, issues, and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, and I'm the host of Research in Manoa, Mondays from 12 to 1 on thinktechhawaii.com. Take a look at us and learn about uh, geophysics, learn about planetology, learn about the ocean and earth sciences at UH Manoa. You'll really enjoy it. So come around. We'll see you then. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, meeting people we may not have otherwise met and helping us understand and appreciate the good things about Hawaii. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Welcome back, everyone. Ted Ralston here, and our guest, Dr. Peter Quigley, UH uh, Vice uh, Assistant Vice President of Community Colleges. Very, pretty very, close. Very close. Okay, close enough. Oh, it'll have, do. And way over on the other side of the Koala House, we have Jim Christofuli from DBED standing by in oh. our uh, Kailua studio. Okay. Anyway, uh, what we were talking about is this Aerospace Summit coming up next week, which happens too infrequently, for, quite frankly, Jim, uh, message. Uh, <laughs> uh, we ought to do it once a year, or maybe even more often than that. Anyway, it's a gathering of a lot of people in the government, in the state, in the, in the um, legislature, and in academia, uh, and private citizens as well, private business, to come together and understand where the strong points are of going forward with an aerospace future in Hawaii. And we were talking just before the break about how to keep that activity going, how to keep that connectivity going, how to keep those ideas forming and flowing and nurturing them somewhere. So, Jim, we talked to you, and we tried to have DBED pick that up, and I think you, you, uh, you may have uh, skated past that a little bit, talked about the grand <laughs> ideas of collaboration, but didn't say how you are going to make this collaboration happen. Yeah, well, what we're looking at, again, is a common denominator where we find a, um, a residence uh, with common visions and, and common objectives and goals, and that common denominator, which is built through, again, public-private partnerships, and uh, looking at the multinational alliances. I think a third dimension to all this is to get the public engaged 
from the get-go as major stakeholders. If the public understands what the benefits of space exploration are and the opportunities for them and their children, the next generation of scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs to engage, that will certainly get the momentum going. But we're looking for common denominators uh, in terms of interest moving forward. And um, again, on these two planes in planetary sustainability to improve life on our home planet, but also extending our reach to the solar system and opening new worlds and opportunities, again, for our kids, grandkids, the future of humanity. That and in a way, like, that's uh, collaborative. That sounds like a mission that you have at UH, or somebody has at UH, to figure out what the interests are of the future and how those interests can be nurtured and fed and, and generate uh, uh, training programs, educational programs that fit that picture. Is that yeah. a university function? Is like well, a sure. Function? And as a matter of fact, we're about to launch a new website uh, that's workforce focused in January. Social media. That's gonna, well, yeah. this is going to be a, a live website that has all the jobs in the state of Hawaii, but also all the projections of where the economy is going. And it also will show us where the opportunities are, but also where the danger is. So, I mean, I think that uh, you know, your, your question is, is key, and that is, uh, the fact of the matter is we're, we're going, we've organized a set of meetings around the state, sector by sector, banking, health, um, uh, you name it, the hospitality sector at the top, because, you know, frankly, industry's tired of having meetings. They don't want to have another meeting. They want to be part of a coherent conversation that moves forward. Now, this aerospace summit will will be uh, part of our strategy to build our own strategic plan for the aerospace aviation industry. We're going to take information uh, and, of course, people's participation and build it into this, into this uh, strategic plan. Why? To put another plan on the shelf? No. Um, it's, we've got to make an argument like we do across the economic sectors about the return on the investment. If we grow this sector, if we do some of the things Jim's talking about in terms of space flight and and I mean, drones, again, I'll make the point that drones, as you pointed out, this article, suddenly we're seeing drones move into HECO's uh, mode of operation. Yeah, what you're referring to is yesterday's uh, uh, announcement in the Star Advertiser right. that HECO has created an unmanned air systems division, and today or yesterday had a demonstration of this in right. front of the press and everybody else. So HECO, a mainline, right. main infrastructure in Hawaii, is moving and, forward and in, in that ten, domain. Ten years ago, I remember saying to my wife, watching a helicopter fly sideways up the side of the Koalau, inspecting those lines, I go, it's a drone job, right? So it's moving, and Bezos and others are talking about a commercial application, et cetera. But the point here is that we've got to do our work. You said, what is UH doing? I'm, UH, as I said before, cannot do everything itself. We've reached out to the private sector. We're reaching out to the government sector, DBED and others to have this conversation around the state with economic sectors, but to do the same thing we want to do here with the Aerospace Summit and the Aerospace um, Strategic Plan. What is the return on the investment? If we grow this mm. sector, how many new jobs, living wage jobs? And the fact of the matter is, is that the, many of the jobs we produce today in the sectors that are, that are prominent are, you know, 40 plus percent, uh, they don't require a college degree, right? And so, there's a real question about, you know, how much living wage jobs we're producing and how sustainable that is. So this is part of not only the excitement aerospace, but, you know, the quality of future life for our children and for, uh, for the, the life in Hawaii. Jim Lolly, who's a venture capitalist, lives on Kona. He was Kleiner Perkins and HP, and he's been part of a lot of UH and community efforts. He said something really important, I thought, when he, we were talking about moving into these areas. He said, Hawaii is one of the most beautiful places in the world, and it should be one of the places where some of the smartest things in the world are going on. This is a smart area for us to get involved in. We're voyagers. We've got a history of voyaging. And so now that drones are becoming sort of mainstream, as you point out, but somebody looks at the second panel, and it's something about space transportation, and they go, well, that's too wild. Well, a few years ago, drones were too wild, and now it's becoming mainstream. So we can take the out. space transportation piece, for example, and, and decompose it down to the pieces that Hawaii can take on. That's the sort of reality we need to form out of this. We'll take the, uh, the, the, the common denominator and the partnerships Jim's talking about and put teeth in it with what you're talking about, which is how does Hawaii really grab a hold of this the day after the conference is over and start moving forward. Right, and, but, but you need more than plans, right? We need these partners, we need yeah. to collaborate, but we also need a policy environment Bingo. I so, need the government that helps incentivize this for So we as well. need to take this group of this this intelligence coming together next week and help it drive bills and legislative decisions in, in the legislature. And I, maybe we need that as an output of this as well. And you've taken you've thrown drones on the table three or four times and you're waiting for me to take the bait. 
I know that, Peter, <laughs> because I've got the session on drones. Uh, it's uh, 11 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, folks, down at, uh, down at the Capitol. And, and I've got a panel, too. It, it's going to be something. Now, we're trying something new here. Aerospace, I'm from aerospace. Aerospace is, is frankly, all sucked up in, in PowerPoint. And we do long PowerPoint presentations that don't necessarily get anywhere. That's what we do in aerospace. And uh, we're trying to take the reverse of that in, in this drone panel. We've got 11 people, uh, either 10 or 11, on the panel. And I think two of them are actually phoning in. Actually, so well, we're giving them very short time to quickly get to their point. What's the message? Because there are so many opinions, so many points of view. They all need to be listened to. Some have more strength than others. But we've got investment people. We've got the FAA. We've got uh, education people, commercial both. practitioners, exactly, and we've got uh, uh, we've got the the PPUTRC head. There's a number of there's sort of so many dimensions to this UAS thing. But the other thing is, it's interesting when you speak of the economic future and the return on investment. People like ESPN are interested. Way non-traditional aerospace uh, names are coming into the game. Amazon, Google. And this thing moves at a different pace than does traditional aerospace. So we, we have a whole new dimension or set of dimensions we have to wrap our arms around. How do we capitalize on that in tourism? I mean, tourism, we need to think of that aspect of it's, it as well. It's a, so. uh, you know, you talked about the pace. It's a dis clearly a disruptive technology. It, um, and, and as you point out, uh, fascinating that HECO is moving in to the area and starting to normalize this. Like, you right. can't help but think about uh, refrigeration at the beginning of the uh, 20th century when, uh, you know, I, we had refrigeration, it was in a few homes, but, but ice harvesting lasted for two more <laughs> decades, right? So we're, we approach change in an interesting way. We're afraid of it or we don't notice it. Uh, but uh, uh, the point I think that's so compelling that you're making is that, um, hello, it's here. It, it, exactly. Hello, it's here, and, and get ready, and, and don't expect that the traditional paths of the, of the past are going to carry us in the future. There are new paths we have to discover and make happen. And, and, we, and we have to learn how to say yes. I mean, frankly, uh, one of the first reactions uh, that we saw in Hawaii was the attempt to, to, to legislate against drones because it was associated with... I think that's based on lack of information. Sure. And once again, this team can really help put together the information that's in a positive sense. Now, I will say, in the case of drones, counter drone is just as big as drone. Uh, counter drone means identify, track, and, and locate. Mm -hmm. And uh, because if you're a construction company, or even worse, if you're a movie company making a movie shoot, you absolutely don't want to have some other drone flying over your set, taking videos and posting them on YouTube that night. Yep. And same for a construction site, same for anything. So one of the big factors that we're slowly coming to realize, maybe faster you're <laughs> coming to realize, is that people have to begin controlling their airspace by knowing what's going on. And so counter drone will become a big part of the business. So this, again, that's a dimension nobody would have thought of a couple well, of years ago. Well, then you mentioned research and UH. I mean, one of the big areas, not only in, in the, you know, the control of airspace, which we've got some history with, with aircraft, transportation, et cetera, uh, we're pretty good at it. But, uh, you know, this is a new dimension. It will require new software, new technologies, new jobs. I mean, I can't underwrite that enough. New and software, the, new and analysis the, methods. And the new virtual technology that's coming on. You've got people wearing, <laughs> yeah. wearing the virtual uh, goggles, flying drones, for God's sakes. You know, and, and, Actually, uh, that's, I, I, I like that. Uh, thanks for that, low, that lead as well. Twice you've given me that lead, so I'll finally take it. Uh, <laughs> you know, we use the word drone racing. It's going to be a big event uh, out in uh, Kualoa later this month. Drone racing could be looked at as the drag racers or some other sure. low end of life, right? It's not really that. It is all about multiple streams of information cognition, seeing in one or two D and computing it in three D, acting in three D, dealing with real and and imagined uh, uh, object uh, 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 disturbances in your flight path or objects that come up right. that you have to deal with, right. and getting around that course as fast as you can. Racing is how you measure it, right. but that is really the, where the next step is going. In fact. Uh, we were out at uh, one of the power plants around here earlier this week trying to fly inside the smokestack. Uh -huh. And I, I tell you, the, the drone racing guys would do a much better job than I can flying inside that smokestack. So we're going to give that a try here. But uh, there's, a lot to add, there's a lot to be added by that component. It also adds competition to the mix. And let's not forget also, I mean, ten, 10 years ago, I remember talking to faculty about uh, distance education and online education. They go, well, you know, it's clunky, it doesn't work, doesn't do this. Ten years later, it's a totally different industry, right? And so what we see today is not what is. So right? don't imagine that the barriers of today are going to well, carry right. through tomorrow. We'll break them down and it's figure moving. out. So, so Jim, we're helping you out here. And we're, Thank you uh, so much. And I, I hope people will uh, consider coming down to the Capitol. Again, it's going to be on 
Tuesday and Wednesday, October 4 and 5, starting at 8.30 on Tuesday morning. And uh, Peter is going to give an overview with the panel on uh, the low-hanging fruit, aerospace in Hawaii, why it's such a strategic growth sector for our state. Then we'll focus on these various areas, aerospace, uh, space transportation, uh, UAS technologies, uh, aerospace education and training developing the next generation of entre entrepreneurs that can take us to the future. And, and there, is a, there is a free lunch involved, isn't there, Jim? Uh, sorry? Is there free lunch involved, is yes, there not? There's free lunch. Free okay. lunch. So oh, there you go. How, how can you beat there that? There you go, I'm right? there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to be there. You're opening the, the show. But I might stay for lunch. Yeah, okay. Hey, it's, it, it's food for thought. What can I say? Okay. And, and once again, I think the, the takeaways from this conversation here, which I, uh, I, I hadn't thought of before, but this issue of keeping this pool of information flowing, that, that that, that seems to me the most important thing here. And uh, it, we'll have this event, but there'll be a lot of ideas that are, you know, the sunshine principle. You shine sun on something and it, and it expands into some new yeah. ideas. So how do we collect, Jim? Let's, let's, let's yeah. throw this challenge at Jim. Sure. Jim, how do we take the ideas that, start, that people have a week later and, and have them come into the picture, have them harvested, have them reacted to? Sure. Well, I'm sure well, people are going to have four times as many ideas the week after than they have at the conference itself. Sure. As, as Peter mentioned, we're going to be incorporating all of the recommendations from the conference into a strategic development plan, sharing that with the governor and the legislature, coming up with a vision for the next five years and thinking about, okay, five years from now, where could we be? Where would we like to be? And then working backwards, strategically and tactically, to figure out how do we get from here to there? Who needs to be involved? What kind of partnerships do we need to build? Uh, what, what type of funding resources? Public sector and private sector can be complementarily linked together to move us forward. But the bottom line in all this, this has to be massively participatory. Not only getting the private sector and the public sector together, but Joe Q. Public. If, if, if the common man understands the value or and the woman. future potential of space exploration. Imaging generic, I think. That, 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 that's our future. Okay. And so maybe we can use the community colleges as part of that connectivity into the public. Isn't that about the closest thing that... that that high value things go out into the public through the community colleges? Sure, and, and certainly uh, the nice thing about drones, like aviation, I'm a real proponent of aviation because it, if you want to get a kid interested in math, put them in a cockpit. Suddenly they want to learn math because they want to do that. Same goes with drones. We know about kids that are, didn't like math and science. They're taking these things apart, putting them back together, and it's fascinating. So it's a great portal uh, to, to STEM careers and STEM interest in math and science and engineering. So I know we have to add economics to that because that's what the ultimate goal is of understanding where the payback is and such. But if maybe the community colleges, once again, play a significant role here. They are outplaced. They're everywhere. And uh, I think I know somebody who's sort of in charge. Yeah, well, count, count us in. And that would be you, Peter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dr. Peter Cooley, thanks for coming on the show today and talking Thank about you. the Aerospace Summit and Jim Christopoli. It looks like the Skype got us from Kailua to Honolulu. No problem. That so, sounds terrific. Thank you. We'll see you guys all uh, Tuesday. Okay. See you down there tomorrow setting up, Jim. Okay. Thanks a lot, I'll folks. Go, huh? We'll see you next week. All righty.